Good morning and thanks for joining us on another edition of This Morning. I'm Ibrahim Shita. I'm standing in for Yuri Polari. Uh, just a um, few days ago or several months, and then yesterday we heard about the Kano crisis and all of the issues unfolding regarding the Kano Emirate. Uh, the reinstatement of the uh, deposed Emir Senussi Lamide Senussi, uh, who uh, is also meant to supplant the uh, Adu Bayero, who was the Emir installed during the Ganduji administration, and then Governor Abba Yusuf, uh, you know, bringing in Sanusi, Lamido, Sanusi, several issues, and then the court order and the court injunction, and then awaiting the judgment and all of that will be making sense of all of the uh, issues coming up from Kano State uh, with uh, uh, a lawyer in the studio, uh, Malaki Ugumadu, a constitutional lawyer. Thank you so much for joining us on this morning. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Right. So, right. So be, before we, con we definitely continue our program because we understand that there is a live program that is being, uh, that we bring into your view uh, at the moment, but then our program will definitely continue on other platforms, especially on YouTube and so on. Uh, so this is the official flag off of the remodeling, upgrading and equipping of Ahmed Sen Yerima Bakura Specialist Hospital uh, in Zamfara. Uh, Guso Zamfara, and then that's um, Governor uh, Dauda Lawal, who is also coming in now. All right, so let's um, begin the show, uh, you know, by bringing you what had happened, you know, over, oh, especially yesterday and then recent developments regarding the Kano Emirate Tussle. Uh, the Kano state government has ordered a demolition of a section of the palace of Addo Bayero, uh, the deposed 15th Emir of Kano. Haruna Derry, Kano State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, has said the government has directed the police to take over the Emir's palace in Nasarawa, local government area. So the dairy said the state government has concluded arrangements for the general reconstruction and renovation of the palace, including uh, demolition, dilapidated walls. Let's bring you what he said. The Kano state government has directed the state commissioner of police to remove the deposed area of the eight metropolitan local government areas from the government uh, her property where he is trespassing as government has already concluded arrangements for the general reconstruction and renovation of the property including the demolition and reconstruction of the dilapidated uh, wall fence with immediate effect well there you have it uh, let's try to make some sense you know of these you know naughty issues coming up. i decided to say naughty issues because everything just seems you know intertwined and then we just have to uh, disentangle it and try to make sense of what is going on there. Uh, so I'll be speaking with the constitutional lawyer, Malaki Ugomadu. So uh, if you look at the um, what came out of the court yesterday, Justice Lehman set aside the steps taken by uh, the state government, but did not nullify the law itself. Uh, can you help us elaborate on the legal distinction and its implications? I'm glad you used the, the expression, no key issues. This whole thing to a large extent, uh, is becoming very convoluted, even for, for legal practitioners, legal minds, no less uh, ordinary Nigerians. Um, but I need to put a caveat almost in the middle, which is that this whole matter is not done yet uh, as we speak. There is a live appeal. Uh, of this matter, and uh, being a, a senior lawyer myself, I am going to be very circumspect to refrain from what may likely be um, a personal opinion in respect to the life issues in court. That is what we are enjoined to do by the rules of our professional ethics. Having said that, um, it is that what is playing out in Kano, particularly taking a cue from the clips you've just uh, 
played. Um, it has come out largely as a contest. And unfortunately, the stool of uh, the Emir of Kano, which is one of the frontline, high-ranking, traditional uh, leadership in Nigeria, has become the pawn. Yeah. Um, almost, almost a victim of <laughs> uh, political contest. Uh, and that takes me back to the provenance of this whole thing. The Ganduje administration effectively in 2019 was able to pass the Kano Emirate Council law by which it literally decimated, balkanized the hitherto unified central Kano Emirate and created sub units, up to four or five of them, uh, leading to the removal of uh, Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi. And we knew what happened thereafter, was banished, uh, contested it. And once there was a change of guard, the House of Assembly, Kanu State House of Assembly, passed a law, which became the repeal law, 2024. Yeah. On that particular incident, it sought to unify back the same emirate mm. to so become one, to the, old the status quo. Yeah. Uh, and once that was done, it paved the way for the <laughs> reappointment, if you like, return of Lamides Sanusi, who was installed almost instantaneously. Now, that led to a couple of legal actions disputing what has happened, the validity and competence of, uh, of the action itself. And then the Federal High, I mean, the Attorney General, which is the state effectively through the Attorney General of Kano State, uh, sought Indeed, contested the jurisdiction of the Federal High Court to deal with issues relating to chieftaincy uh, matters. And um, while that was on, the, 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 they also sought for a stay, you know. Uh, then... Leading up, the say was granted, leading up to the appeal that is now sought on the issue of the jurisdiction of the Federal High Court to deal with chieftaincy matter. But here is the point. On the 23rd of May, 2024, that was the day that Sanusi Lamido was reinstated or appointed whichever way you want to put, put it. On the, for this letter, which is the 27th of the same May, month of May, there was an order, an interim order, portion to the suit I talked about, ordering that status quo should remain. Should remain, yeah. So the knocky issue now, status quo should remain pending the determination of yeah. the matter. yeah. The issue now is, what is the status quo? That was the question I was, I was going to ask. Please, don't ask me that question, <laughs> because that will lead me into what may be life issues mm. at the Court of Appeal. Mm. And I have admonished that I, I'm going to be very circumspect and refrain from that. The, right. Our practice and the rules of our ethics forbids us from doing that. So speaking, generally, speaking generally, speaking uh, generally, I go back to my preliminary statement that, and it appears that the actors are digging in so forcefully in a way that suggests that at the end of the day, what will emerge clearly 
as the casualty in this situation is the stool itself. That's right. Is the institution of the tradition. Think about it. Nigeria has not always been a democracy in the sense of the parameters of a democratic society as we know it today. We have always had a way of organizing ourselves around or through institutions of traditional institutions all across the continent of Africa. And it was very prominent, pronounced, and profound in recognized uh, territories. Let me put it that way. The Kano Emirate is one of them. The 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 Uni of if, uh, the Oba of Benin, the uh, women of Onitsha, high class, first class, high profile traditional institutions. How then did we come to that point? where you could sit down there, I can conveniently predict that once the pendulum swings politically, you are likely, going, to <laughs> you are likely going to have the, the incumbent, mm. traditional ruler, shown the way out. How the other uh, other traditional institutions in their respective states, have managed to avoid it. Should be the lesson mm. of Kano. Kano is a, a very metropolitan society, and it has highly, historical, the, you know, antecedents. Very rich historical mm. antecedent with some degree, if you like, high degree of political sophistication mm -hmm. and some radical bent towards. Uh, you know, to also organizing themselves. I, I, I hope, I, I, I do believe that that is partly what is playing out. Because in these other uh, places where we talk about, you could see the, the nature of the people who are pliant, disposed to comply, and uh, almost obsequiously led. And to. Now, uh, my worry is this. Um, in the same manner that I have observed what is happening to the traditional institution, the judiciary may not come out of this without some bruises. Mm. Uh, in the sense that a lot of issues have even been thrown up. First, what is a federal high court doing with respect to traditional institutions, subject matters around entrumment, detrument, tenure. Does, does not have the right uh, to exercise jurisdiction. Again, again, I'm not going no to answer. give yes or no answer, but the issues are there. Now you're, you're actually raising questions, uh, like what is the Federal High Court doing? Yes, in, yes. In this matter. So yes. in essence, you're saying that they do not necessarily have oh, well, to if you, be dragged if, into if you are, this if you are, matter. If you're putting me on the box, I, I would say that that is one of the issues that have come up. And right. to the extent that it, it, it might be, and possibly an issue before the Court of Appeal, as I understand it, I'm not going to refrain from saying yes or no. However, if you go further and look into the... Circumstances. Remember that it is this same matter that uh, that um, you know broke out, and the question about where the order, initial order, was made in the first place became an issue. <laughs> where was the trial judge? Mm -hmm. Was in the country, outside the country? To what extent can you double into this matter when there are state uh, uh, high courts and? Uh, to so. deal with this and all so on and so forth. So, at the end of the day, whichever way it turns out, uh, considering that the actors are not taking it lightly, uh, you will see that the judiciary has also been brought to the battle yeah. line, yeah. to the free, giving every other person the, the, if you like, the opportunity to hit at it once more. And um, to the extent that they have been fought and back, conflicting judgments or rulings and orders 
uh, further exacerbating the situation. To that extent, I believe firmly that the judiciary will not escape, you know, in, in terms of yeah. integrity. That, that, uh, the so judiciary, on the, that's on the one, uh, one hand. But if you look at uh, what Justice Lehman said, mm -hmm. you know, he emphasized the seriousness of flouting court orders because, you know, we've often, often talk, talked about uh, not obeying court orders. Whenever court gives an order, you know, we see politicians choosing when to obey and disobey. So he said, and I quote, he said the catastrophic situation could have been averted if the respondents had followed due process by complying with court order, which would still have allowed them to carry out their assignments. So does it look like the, the Kano government didn't make a smart move? Uh, his lordship, Honorable Justice Liman, and I think I appeared, uh, appeared before him a couple of times. He was not just... Uh, Qatar uh, in Benin, Federal Court, very much in Lagos, uh, for, uh, the Lagos Division of the Federal Court. Couldn't have put it better. Section 287 uh, of our Constitution, 1999 Constitution as amended, I think subsection 2, since we are talking of Federal High Court, it is very clear about the responsibility of every Nigerian, every institution, every authority, no less government of, uh, of the state or sub-national uh, structures, to comply and obey court orders. Yeah. In fact, that responsibility insists that such Persons or agencies, authority, must help to enforce the orders of government. And, you know, our knowledge of the law is that it does not lie in your mouth mm. to sit and say this is a, a good order or a correct judgment before you comply. Mm. That responsibility is imposed on every citizen of this country every authority, every agency to obey with court order, uh, whether given rightly or, as we say, per inquirium. Now, the options you have are clear. In this regard, on this call, I can prefer you cannot either, depending on what you see That's right. or what problems you have with the order or judgment, you can approach the same court seeking to set aside that order or that judgment. Okay, so the parameters are there. Well, hold your or you appeal. Right. Uh, please hold your thought, uh, Mr. Ogumadu. We have um, Prince joining us from Abuja. Uh, Prince, please okay. make your point. Well, good morning. Good morning, uh, good morning to your Good morning, Mr. Prince. Okay. Um, I think we, the issue we are having as a country is not having a clear decision from our traditional institution and government in terms of our government elected institutions. Because if we have a clear distinction, it is a process that is clearly known by all that reside within a particular location how appointment, displacement, removal, sanction of our traditional rulers should be done. Because when we now have cases where politicians made into traditional affairs, then we will have the weight that is supposed to carry. Our traditional rulers have become individuals that are subject to, when I mean subject to, to the mercy of politicians in terms of their appointment, in terms of them being installed as um, traditional rulers in their various localities, which is not supposed to be so. Now, the reason why we have the traditional rulers is the fact that people don't tend to understand their importance. These are people who are supposed to play the role of an elder in every locality that they are, advise the government as it regards to issues within their locality. But when we don't have traditional rulers who are appointed, they cannot talk to the government, they can't hold them accountable, they can't even bring the government to bear to see things that are happening in their locality that needs improvement that needs them to be done for the betterment of their citizens around them, then yeah. becomes a the problem. 
So what we are having today is a failure of the traditional institutions to actually play to the gallery of the politicians where they don't really have, the, they don't really know their importance anymore. That's right. First and foremost, during the issues of Kano, when this issue started, where any attorney was removed, a lot of persons who were watching this scenario tend to ask questions. How do we not have politicians that have so much power that you could remove an emir? Yes, there was a process. But was that process the right process that was supposed to be carried out? And we are now bringing these same issues to, to, the, to the law court for court to interpret whether these things that were done were right or wrong, which is not supposed to be so. Mm. We, are the, we are the kingmakers. We are the persons who sit in council to actually appoint and give back in big decisions when it comes to traditional matters. That, that's right, Prince. Your, your point is made. Thank you, Prince. Uh, well, it actually raised Thank a very fundamental, yes. um, you know, um, issue surrounding this uh, this matter. But then, if you look at, he's saying that the traditional rulers should be accorded that respect that you know we used to accord them you know, back in the day. But you you started off by mentioning the kind of democracy mm. we, we practice in this country. Where is the place of that traditional ruler? I mean, where is the place of traditional uh, rulership vis-a-vis -vis the Nigerian constitution that is being operated democratically? Mm. Well, thank you for that question. But again, I'd like to appreciate uh, Prince from Abuja because it, his comment actually dovetailed into my preliminary statement. That's right. And I, will, I, I, with all modesty, was able to predict that that institution is going to be one of the casualties by the end of this whole That's right. foot and back. Uh, and here is the point. Um, the fact that we practice democracy, well, from where I'm coming, civil rule, mm. does not dislodge our knowledge and experience and the place of traditional institutions in the history of our lives, even the trajectories of our development as a nation uh, cannot be complete without the rules of traditional institutions and leadership. We all know and remember uh, King Okobo, mm. uh, the above modern food, yeah. the needs of if even the or new of if of, of the old till today. So, what is missing, or what has become contaminated, is the overbearing influence of politics, or if you like, the, the attempt, the context between that institution as a separate entity, effectively entrenched in organizing the local environments and how they are now literally absorbed. That, that crisis or process of absorbing the traditional uh, institution into the democratic uh, experimentation is what has created this problem. Look, mm -hmm. Anoba, the traditional ruler, most of them are hereditary. That's right. They take off, and many of them predate, in terms of where they all started or took off from, many of them preceded this nation as That's a right. country. As an entity, yeah. Uh, and therefore, they had always been, and they've always organized it themselves. What became the source of that crisis is the point where they, 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 they were, they, they were, the recognition was extended to them. So, Anoba exists, but the government, through the Ministry of uh, Chieftaincy Affairs, need, <laughs> need to recognize them, give them staff of office, and then begin to place certain parameters that's, around. That's a very, that's a very, that, that's um, where we got it very interesting you know, direction you've taken it. But then, we'll, we'll take it up from there. Let me bring in um, George, who is calling in from Ikeja. Uh, George, please make yeah. your point. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Carry on. Yes, good, good morning and good morning to Malaki. Malaki, why? Mr. George, good to hear from you again. Uh, Ibrahim, 
I do not see the rationale behind an old name of Ife, a sultan of Sokoto, or power of Benin, a mayor of Kano, being placed under the control of the local government chairman. I, can, I cannot place it with reason. Now, the, what is happening in Kano, at the initial, was initiated by the uh, former governor, Gan, Dr. Ganduje. He politicized this too wanting to punish one person and then establish several units that is meant for one unit or one up and one traditional ruler. What is happening now is it can happen in the neighborhood simultaneously he eventually retains the seat. Another governor will come, he will prefer another traditional ruler and on seat one in order to put the one that he likes. It shouldn't be like that. In my view, this is a legal matter. I think the constitution needs to be revisited on this traditional rulership. The ultimate appointment of a traditional ruler that is not hereditary should end with every state traditional council, not the governor. Let traditional matters be reserved for traditional people. Otherwise, this politicization will never end. And I, I, I think I should when I see certain things uh, happening. Oh no, this uh, will be uh, will, will be controlled by a local government chairman. You can just write in a letter and say you are no longer there today. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. We, we still have our value system right, in our country that needs to be protected. That's my view. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. George uh, from Ikeja. Uh, quite interesting uh, submission. But then that is the reality of the case. Mm. The, the, the the reality on ground. So. Uh, but in in a country or even in a ship, we can't have two captains. Mm -hmm. The only thing we can have is a captain and then the or the assistant. Uh, but in the in this context called um, this geographical milieu called Nigeria, is it possible for the traditional institution to stand on its own, and then we have the constitutional uh, constituted authority also standing on its own, and then the traditional ruler will be doing is while the constituted authority will also be carrying on you know, with its own duties and they won't have to interface. So if you, if you roll back to what I said before, Mr. George, by the way, I share George's sentiments, I, I do, uh, and it's not far from the point I was making. If you, if you push back a bit, you would recall that I had alluded to that. On the basis of the fact that there are rules is clear and known. We all come from villages. Mm. And make no mistake about it, there are security implications to what is happening. Uh, I don't know how it has been managed so far. Otherwise, the canoe that we all, yeah. <laughs> we all know, the canoe of, by now uh, would have, a, once upon the time in Kano, would have responded right. in the way and manner. Maybe the hunger in the town is too. Is, uh, yeah, of course. Taking over but that would have also. But, but, but here, here is a point. Mr. George, very great submissions, but it, 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 it is never a constitutional matter. Go to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria from chapter one to the last session. You will not see anything relating to traditional institution. In fact, there have been agitations, even by the uh, Council of Traditional Rulers in some states and uh, pushing that they should be recognized constitutionally, and that if that happened, the tendency to be able to be properly integrated into governance, mm. particularly at the local uh, level, will be better handled. But I, I have personally pushed the position that, look, these institutions are better off for what they are, traditional institutions properly is constituted and instituted within the localities and municipalities of their environment. And the essence of this thing is not uh, the grace of an Oba mm. or a king or an emir. It's not so much about that uh, written uh, certificate or uh, staff of office. No! It is the historical consciousness 
and the relevance of that stool to the community indigenously that gives it not just the impetus, but the importance. Right. Uh, 